say good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to wherever you are at this point in time when you're tuning into this video. We've got a lot of stuff that we were gonna be doing to the Minimax today, which you could kind of foreshadow there in the intro of my video. I actually had to run out to grab some things from the good old auto parts store. Filthy as can be, I've been driving the ever living crap out of this thing. It's actually been extremely fun. I drive this over that truck all the time. Well, because I don't really mind getting it dirty and it gets extremely good fuel economy. I'm averaging somewhere between 25 to 30 miles per gallon in this truck. It's not hand calculated. I should probably hand calculate it so that way I'm not giving you guys misleading information. But on my Edge CTS2, I am showing between 25 to 30 miles to the gallon. So right off the get-go, we did have three boxes. Now you can see we only have two. One box is right there. And the reason why is well because these were bed rail covers that I was gonna be putting on the truck today just to clean up the bedside here a little bit. As you can see, trucks generally come OEM with bed rail covers, but I believe that this truck had some sort of an attachment in it. Amazon sent me six and a half foot bed rail covers rather than eight foot box bed rail covers, and that's not gonna do the job. So that'll have to be for another time, but the meat and potatoes of this upload is well in both of these boxes. Which one should we jump into first? I'm thinking that we're gonna go right here. Well, no name in the diesel aftermarket is Dirty Hooker Diesel. I went out and picked myself up their steering stabilizer kit and the support bearing. Now this is a pretty important modification for any independent front suspension trucks, AKA just GM brand, especially if you're looking to do some boosted launches with your truck. This is basically a steering bracket that reinforces the front end. So now you guys know that I do have PPE upgraded tie rods on this truck already. That's the number one most important thing, especially if you're planning on doing any sort of launch at all. This bracket basically goes on your steering arm, which is that piece that's on that, that has that hydraulic right there. There's a bolt right here that you can see is one of the two mounting points where that bracket is going to go. And then the bearing is actually gonna to mount to the two lower bolts right there on the differential, the front differential, to basically provide as a means of reinforcement for all of the other steering components that receive a ridiculously heavy amount of stress when under a boosted launch scenario. There you guys have a little bit of a clearer view at what we're looking at here. It's a pretty simple install. You're probably gonna to wanna to use an impact to get these off. Sorry for the angles, guys. I know they're not the best. We're working in a pretty tight space down here, as one can see. Right then and there, you immediately gain superior reinforcement to that of the, the stock components, which is what you want because you don't really want one little metal rod holding together all of the force that's being exerted from your powertrain and all of the weight associated with it. I'm gonna quickly throw just a little bit of thread locker. So there's a little bit of a better look of it installed. I'll get another angle once I'm out from under the truck. So this is a $70 option. This is basically a bracket that mounts up to your differential. It's got a bearing on the end to provide just a little bit more support right in the middle area of the bracket. So there is everything installed nice and reinforced and it'll definitely give you just a little bit of added confidence when you go to do a boosted launch. So if you guys are wondering about a cost on that, everything out the door was about $270. The bearing guide bracket was actually not included in the kit. It's a drop down option when you go to purchase it. I would suggest it. It's an extra 70 bucks that I personally think that it's an absolute no brainer. That was step number one, pretty simple. Now step number two, so we got a left and a right and they're fragile. Of course, when new mods come, you get a little bit impatient. So I did break into the boxes last night. I'm sorry that I held off on you guys. We finally went ahead and got the Minimax, some 2015.5 tow mirrors. It feels so good. These things are long, long overdue. Guys, so I've got these mounted. Everything is looking great. They mounted up wonderfully. We'll go into details on that in just a few minutes. Now, before I get this door panel back and installed, 
I basically need to run the wire that hooks up to the rear backup lights. That is a positive and negative that's basically going to tap into the rear cargo light button, which is right here, lighting up the back cab light, as you can see. Um, so that's gonna be a really nice feature that I'm not going to film, but I did wanna just quickly show you guys. All right, so there is phase one, if you will. Got our classic General Motors signature angle on the mirrors, something that I absolutely can't stand. So phase two of this project right now, it's actually going to be removing this little cap. You really don't even need a screwdriver, you just kinda of put some pressure on the back end here, and that cap pops off. Loosen these four bolts. Convenient that we have the GoPro in that same spot. So after installing two spacers, I quickly realized that a quarter of an inch might not have been enough. Three eighths was actually the perfect combo. As you guys can see here, we've got the mirror laying actually perfectly leveled with three eighths of an inch of spacing. So that would be three of these washers. Two will get you more leveled than they were initially, but three will be the perfect combination. I saw a quarter of an inch somewhere on the internet, so I decided to roll with that, but I quickly realized that it wasn't really suited for my fancy and what I was looking to accomplish, and I just wanted to share that with you guys as well. Now, the last part here, guys, when we go to install this cap, it's actually not going to fit perfectly due to the fact that the mirror has actually moved out a little bit now. As you can see here, it's having a hard time closing and that's because of these ridges on the mirror caps. We'll actually have to grind these down a little bit. Perfect job for a Dremel due to the fact that they're actually bouncing off of this piece of the mirror right here. Just a little bit of finessing gets you a long way. So there you guys can see the finished product. And now you have your upgraded HD look, if you will, paired to that of stock. Drop a comment below. What do you guys think? I know a lot of you wanted me to stay with the conventional non-toe style mirrors because it's a race truck. But at the same time, a lot of you really wanted to see this truck take on the HD look with the tow mirrors. Personally, I'm gonna go driver's side over passenger side, but drop a comment below. Definitely interested in knowing what you guys are thinking about the new mirrors. In order to avoid redundancy, I'm gonna go ahead and get the passenger side installed here, and then we're gonna go out and we're gonna see what the truck looks like on the road, and we are gonna do some functionality testing with the newly installed cross-member support bracket, which I'm really, really excited about. So I was quite literally just getting started on these mirrors right here, literally just getting started, and our good friend Mikey happened to appear with his Skyline. Now, unfortunately, it is raining a little bit out today. This is the first time I've actually seen this car in person, and, uh, Huh. This thing is just too sick. What's up, dude? How you, doing? How you been? Are you, are you stuck in there? Do you need a hand? <laughs> I heard this thing like roaring down the road. I'm like, what the hell could that be? Good old Pennsylvania. Yep, good old PA, man. Look at that. The heart of the beast right there. Hopefully you get good weather. Sounds great. It literally made every line by hand. I mean, besides ordering the actual hosing, every sure. line was made by hand. Wow, looks good, dude. Bummed, you know, when I went out to see Ryan, yeah, so it was like the first time, first time seeing a Supra and it rains. The same byline in the Supra is that this is all-wheel drive. Aha, uh -huh. we should go out for a ride then, buddy. We can. Let's do it. Watching it, so it's a little pain in the a fun little distraction got us off topic for a little while now we got Dur the explorer here too if you guys don't recall you've probably seen him in some of my videos there's his 2015.5 duramax 
And uh, you did the mirror conversion as well. So finally, I'm getting my truck caught up to speed here. And uh, yeah, we're going to get back into it. But again, I'm not going to film this because you guys already pretty much saw the entire process on that side. So I will catch you when this is done. All right, guys. So we have everything installed at this point in time. You guys can see we got the nice new mirrors on. They came out really good. And we've got Stefan Dura, the Explorer, in the truck as well. This is your first time in the Minimax, right? Yep, first time. Yeah, so we're uh, we're going to head out to Mexico here. Uh, once we get past all these cornfields, we're going to do some boosted launches to test out hey how that front cross member works everything is going to stay straight as an arrow which is what we like especially with independent front suspension it's very crucial to make sure that you have all of that uh, increased rigidity in those important areas and we're going to get some first-hand experiences for Dara the Explorer when it comes to boosted launches uh have you ever done any boosted launches before I have not okay cool yeah so this should be kind of fun hopefully we don't break anything All right, so let's uh, let's get a few pounds of boost rolling here. And see how this thing feels. Our transmission is nearly dead at this point in time so let's let it cool down <laughs> oh that was insane yeah guys needless to say right now i know i made a video a few videos ago about how my transmission was slipping and i attribute that not to actually the transmission slipping but i believe that i was having a little bit of tuning difficulties at the time which is why the truck felt so slow but i can confidently say that right now in this cab there's this lingering scent of uh let's say clutch pack maybe Something smells like it's burning. I, I would say that this is a smell that generally is associated with the transmission on its last leg. Needless to say, the tow mirrors are holding up extremely well. There's a quick shot for you guys on the exterior of the new mirrors. I'm really, really pleased with how they turned out. Extremely, extremely pleased with the look of the Minimax. Now, finally took on the look of an HD truck and that leveling does wonders with the overall look and appearance. I feel like when they're on an angle, they're just really not right. The one thing that I also wanted to mention to you guys is the fact that these mirrors are currently set up to the OEM specs. So these LED turn signals, what would otherwise be running lights on my big truck are actually turn signals on the little truck because that's how they were wired from the factory. And, you, and I really like it. Now, unfortunately it doesn't serve the purpose of a running light. I do like that look and I could do that as well, but that would require actually taking apart this mirror, installing different diodes and basically having switchback capability. And all of that was way too out of scope for today's task, which was basically just to get them installed and give this thing a nice HD look. And that is exactly what happened. I'm very, very pleased with it. Speaking of the giveaway Grom, I want you guys to know that there is one week remaining on that Grom before it could be yours. This thing, I'm gonna be kind of sad to see it go. We're gonna be doing the new tires here, hopefully this week. There he goes. It is a freaking ton of fun and I cannot wait to find out who is the winner so that way I can contact you guys if you're local. We're going to make a whole video out of it. If you're not, then maybe I'll FaceTime you. That way we can share your reaction with the entire vlog and then we'll make sure that we get that thing delivered out to you guys. Now guys, before we end this video, I actually wanted to reach out to some of my Duramax experts in the audience to ask you guys a quick question. I actually have a few inquiries out currently to my tuner. Recently, the Minimax has actually been making some really strange whining sounds at the top end coming from the driver's side area in the motor bay. And again, it only happens when under full throttle at 
the higher range of the RPM spectrum. I have absolutely no idea what it is. I'm gonna check out my up pipe to see if it stretched at all. So I'm extremely interested in finding out what anybody out in the audience might know on this topic as it's something new to me and I haven't really been able to find the definitive answer online. So definitely drop a comment below if you have any inclination as to what that could be. I would really appreciate it. So with that said guys, one week remaining on the Grom giveaway. Definitely go ahead and get entered for that. Can't wait to find out who's winning it. If you're local, you're getting on the vlog. If you're not, maybe we'll FaceTime. That way we can get you on the vlog as well. It's gonna be really cool to see you guys guys out on the channel. Every $5 is one automatic entry for that thing. And it's going to be kind of sad to see it go, but it's about due. So my like league, I love you guys. Do what you do best. If you haven't hit that subscribe button already, definitely go ahead and do so. And I promise y'all I'll see you in the next upload. Later.